On our previous episode, we had James Deacon to share with us his take on the impact of train on low to middle end cars. Now, James and I will be joined by Henry Antonio, KPMG's vice chairman and a car enthusiast, in our discussion on the impact of train on high end cars. So, we're going to talk about um, the effect of, of the train on high end cars. Mm-hmm. So, but before that, let's talk about your, your love of your cars. So, may you know what your cars are? Do you have high end cars as well? Me personally, no, not at all. I, I've got, well, it depends what you consider high end. For some, it is, it's Trailblazer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my main day to day. And I drive a van as well. It's an Eccentric okay. van. Okay. It's all pimped out inside. And that's my my thing to beat traffic. I've okay. got like an office, a table, a couch, a bed, wow. karaoke, the whole thing. Okay. But um, and then also a little runabout, which is a Volkswagen Polo manual. Okay. So okay. Definitely not in this range. Okay. How about you, Henry? Well, my my favorite car. Obviously, we're here, so <laughs> my favorite car is my surprisingly is my Levante, the SUV for Maserati, which is a it's a great car. great great car, very powerful, but actually very smooth. Okay. With my day to day car, I use a BMW. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was saying we are gonna talk about the effect of the train law on high end cars. So just to give you a backgrounder, prior to the train law. The average effective tax rate on high-end cars, meaning cars priced beyond 2.1 million, is at 22%. So that's about 60% nominal rate. But under the train law, it is now at 50% nominal rate. And effectively, this is based on the DOF, DOF information, it's now at 30%. But when they've plotted it in a graph, they actually uh, depicted it as a like a, when you put a Christmas tree down. So the effect of the train law is actually like Christmas tree, right? It's not really a straight line going up. So the effect varies based on the price. So let's talk about what do you think is the intention of the government in terms of um, why they've implemented the train law and why they've, they've just imposed 50% on high-end cars. What's your take on that? Well, personally, I think obviously it was quite clear well, what they said was to raise revenue for this build, build, build in particular. That was probably the main goal. Of course, um, there are other programs that they want to, to fund using the train law. Now, um, there was a lot of fear surrounding it because people, there was a bit of, there was so many leaked information that was just not accurate. People were really scared. There was a lot of panic buying. But eventually, I think they came up with a very sensible version. Uh, I do have to credit them for that. They, they did come under fire when they talked about cars like these and certain cars after a certain price bracket where they actually went down. Mm-hmm. Some cars mm-hmm. in some sectors went down and, and this upset a lot of people. I got my inbox flooded with angry okay. people saying, come on, you know, so the rich, you know, the, they, they're already rich, they should pay more, mm-hmm. you know, this is, should tax the rich, penalize the rich. And I have to explain to them, listen, I can see where you're coming from, but, mm-hmm. but when you tax this car 200% or another 100% over mm-hmm. and above, we already pay a lot more okay. here than they do in the yeah. US, and, right? Definitely. If you're going to jack that up again, mm-hmm. you're going to kill off an industry, a whole sector. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be taxing the rich. Okay. It's going to impact the working class. Okay. It's going to impact the people that open the doors here, although nobody opened it first. Okay. It's going to impact the mechanics and the, and the receptionists and the guy that makes your coffee and the beautiful sardine sandwiches that they sell here. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to suffer. Because at one percent of the total market, it's not going, it's not big enough. Yes. One to make an impact on the government coffers, and two, it's not going to be resilient enough to survive that. Okay. So you're going to kill off an industry, and for what? May as well stimulate growth in that sector. Don't look at it as penalizing or or molly coddling the rich. Okay. Let it grow first, because when that grows, there's still if it's ten percent of something, it's better than two hundred percent of nothing. Okay. Yes. How about you? I'm just glad it's not double. That's okay. one thing for sure. Uh, as, as James said, a lot of people were worried last year, and I think there's a, a significant bump, particularly at the end of the year in terms of, of sales. Um, I think the impact of the, the reduction on excise tax is just neutralized also. I mean, these are imported cars, and uh, because the, the pesos is weakening, uh, you know, then foreign exchange is obviously more expensive. Okay. So I think on, on and off, the impact to the dealers and distributors is pretty neutral. I was also saying that because these are such high-end cars, you know, um, the price is fairly inelastic, the demand is fairly inelastic. Meaning, you know, you bump it a little bit here, you bump it a little bit down here, it's not going to make a significant difference. And so I agree with James. What's more important is to try to sustain 
an industry. This is a niche market, but it's a niche market that adds up to the economy. And there are other, other than just the distributors, there are the people that work, the mechanics, and, and all the support that goes surrounding this, this industry that, that adds up to the economy. And I think, you know, that's the way to go. Okay, so that was a fairly interesting discussion. In the next episode, I will be talking about the impact of trade on the excise tax on fuel, which actually the government thinks it will be the, one of the biggest source of their increase in taxation for the coming years. So thank you, James, for uh, joining us in our vlogs. And so of course, Henry also. For thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. We appreciate it. So if you want to know more about the train, like this video, give a comment below, and subscribe to your YouTube channel. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So get on the train with KPMG.